What if an ancient god's epic journey wasn't just a miracle, but a manipulation of space-time itself? What if the story of a great leap was actually a story about physics so advanced we are only beginning to imagine it today? No, I'm not talking about a new science fiction blockbuster. This is a story from one of our greatest epics. Welcome to Chaturya, the Four State Podcast. I am K. Hari Kumar, author of nine books and three films. If you're new here, let me tell you that I love to explore the fascinating crossroads between ancient stories and modern science. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for notifications. Your support encourages me to make more meaningful content just like this one. In today's episode, I am going to talk about Hanuman's incredible journey to Lanka from the Ramayana. It's a story of devotion and divine power, of course. But what if it's also a story that resonates eerily with our most advanced and most speculative scientific theories? This is a story of Hanuman's quantum flight from India, that is Bharat, to Lanka, viewed through the lens of modern physics. To understand the sheer magnitude of what we are discussing, we have to go back to the source, the timeless epic, the Ramayana. Those who already know the story about Hanuman's flight to Lanka, they can skip this part and proceed to the next chapter in the video. So let's begin. The scene is one of profound despair. Sita, the beloved wife of Prince Ram, has been kidnapped by the demon king Ravan to his island fortress of Lanka. Ram and his army of Vanas stand at the edge of the vast southern ocean. The goal is right there. It is Lanka but an impassable expanse of water separates them. Hope is dwindling. The mission seems doomed. Who could possibly cross this water body to reach Lanka? It is in this moment of darkness that the wise old bear king, Jambavan, approaches a solitary figure. Hanuman, son of the wind god Vayu, sits quietly, unaware of his own immense power because of a childhood curse. And as Jambavan speaks, Reminding Hanuman of his divine lineage and his destiny, something awakens within him. A dormant volcano of energy comes to life. What happens next is a stuff of legend. Hanuman begins to grow. His form expands, rising like a golden mountain. He places his feet on the mountaintop, pressing down with such force that the rock itself begins to splinter. And with a prayer to his father, Pavan, the wind god, Hanuman leaps into the sky. The word Manojavam, meaning as fast as thought or as swift as the mind, is often used to describe Hanuman. It is a metaphor meant to convey a speed beyond our normal understanding. A journey that defies all normal physical limits. And yet, his path is not a simple one. It is a trial. First, the mountain Manak rises from the sea, offering him a place to rest. Hanuman, focused on his mission, graciously declines. Then comes Surasa, the mother of the serpents, sent by the gods to test Hanuman. Surasa stands in Hanuman's path and declares that he must pass through her monstrous mouth. Hanuman expands his form. She expands her jaws. He grows larger. Her mouth becomes a gaping, big cave. Then in a flash of brilliance, Hanuman shows his intellect. He immediately shrinks himself down to the size of a thumb and darts into her mouth and flies out of her ear, satisfying the test. Having overcome all these obstacles, Hanuman finally sees the shore of Lanka. The epic describes the distance of his leap as 100 yojanas, a single uninterrupted journey across an ocean. How could any being, divine or otherwise, achieve such a monumental feat? Was this simply a story about flying or does the poetic description of his journey hint at something far more profound? Perhaps a manipulation of reality itself? To even begin to contemplate that question, we must take a leap of our own, from ancient epic poetry into the farthest reaches of theoretical physics. What if the principles described metaphorically in the Ramayana find an echo in our most audacious scientific theories? In 1994, a Mexican physicist named Miguel Alcubierre published a paper that sounded like it was lifted straight from science fiction. 
he proposed a mathematically plausible method for faster than light travel known as the Alcubierre drive, or more popularly, a warp drive. The idea is quite elegant. To get from point A to point B, the ship doesn't move at incredible speeds. Instead, the drive manipulates space-time itself. It would cause the fabric of space-time in front of the ship to contract, pulling the destination closer while expanding the space-time behind it, pushing the start point away. So here, this journey is less like a bullet and more like a surfer riding a wave on the ocean of space-time. Now it is absolutely critical to state that this remains firmly in the realm of theory. To achieve this, the drive needs something called an exotic matter, a hypothetical substance with negative energy density. Up to this date, no such matter has ever been observed. Now with that crucial reality check in place, let's return to Hanuman. His leap is as swift as the mind. Remember Manojavam. What if this metaphor isn't just about velocity, but about the nature of the travel from point A to point B? That is, from India's tip to Lanka. What if the story is trying to describe a journey so far beyond conventional flight that it can only be compared to the instantaneous nature of thought? Could Hanuman's leap be an allegory for bending space-time? Did he not just fly across the vast ocean, but did he, through his divine power, metaphorically fold the distance bringing Lanka towards him? The epic describes the world reacting to this feat. Mountains shaking, the ocean churning. This is the description of a cosmic event. A moment where the normal rules of physics seem to have been suspended. A theoretical warp drive needs a phenomenal power source. For the Alcubierre drive, it's hypothetical exotic matter, the power source. For Hanuman, the source was his divine nature, manifesting as abilities known as the Ashtasiddhis. Those who have read the Hanuman Chalisa might have heard this. Ashtasiddhinavnidhikidata The Ashtasiddhis are the eight great perfections. So let's revisit Hanuman's encounter with Surasa. Remember, the test was to pass through her mouth. How do you translate this into a modern context? The parallel is unmistakable and it's found in the pages of modern comic books and cinema. I'm talking about Marvel's Ant-Man. He uses hypothetical pin particles to alter the distance between his atoms, allowing him to shrink to the size of an ant or grow into a giant. So Surasa opened her jaws to an immense size. In response, Hanuman used a siddhi known as Mahima, the power to become infinitely large. Surasa opened her mouth even wider. And yet this contest of brute force could have continued indefinitely, but when brute size isn't the answer, Hanuman instantly switches to his next ability, Anima, which is where he becomes infinitesimally small. It's a brilliant strategic pivot using his powers with intelligence, not just force. Hanuman doesn't just shrink, he weaponizes his size, making the obstacle irrelevant. This specific moment of instantaneous shrinking brings to mind a different and even stranger concept from the world of quantum mechanics. Quantum tunneling. In the subatomic world, a particle can pass through a barrier even if it doesn't have enough energy to go over or around it. It simply has a non-zero probability of appearing on the other side. What if Hanuman's mastery of Anima was a conscious manipulation of his own quantum state? By shrinking to a subatomic level, he no longer had to physically outmaneuver Surasa. He could simply tunnel through the physical barrier she represented. An instantaneous act of transcending physical reality. Hanuman shrinking to pass through Surasa is of course not a literal example of quantum tunneling, but it serves as a powerful allegory for the same principle overcoming an obstacle not with greater force, but by fundamentally changing one's own properties to make the obstacle irrelevant. The ability to consciously will one's own atomic structure to reconfigure itself precisely what Hanuman did. Let's be absolutely clear. These are analogies, not equivalences. But yet the parallels show that our ancient ancestors were deeply contemplating the nature of reality. They were asking, what is the fundamental nature of a physical form, our existence? Is it fixed or is it mutable? These are the same grand questions that continue to drive scientific inquiry even today. 
Before we get to our final thoughts, what do you think? Are these just fascinating coincidences or could there be a deeper connection between ancient wisdom and modern scientific theory? Let me know in the comments what your perspective is. If you enjoyed this journey to the crossroads of myth and physics, hit that like button and subscribe for more explorations into our world's most mind-bending stories. So where does this leave us? We have a legendary leap that metaphorically mirrors a warp drive and divine abilities that resonate with our modern superhero concepts, even hinting at principles like quantum tunneling. Hanuman's flight, when viewed through this lens, becomes more than just a journey across an ocean. It transforms into a journey beyond the perceived limits of the physical world. And perhaps, just perhaps, a glimpse into a future that science has yet to fully unlock. See you next time and keep questioning the stories we think we know. May Hanuman be with you. 